What's the word, y'all? Quick reaction, one take. The game just wrapped up. The New York Knicks are advancing to the second round behind a Josh Hart three. I understood what Nick Nurse is going for. Jalen Brunson had been killing him all game long. He ended up with 41 points. It's just basically the same idea from game one and game two. If Josh Hart, if Josh Hart beats us, then he beats us. And, well, he did. Uh, he hesitated. He wanted to swing it, but he was like, I got to let it fly, and he did. So, uh, shout out to Josh Hart. Shout out to the New York Knicks. They played a phenomenal game. I mean, honestly, this was, uh, maybe this is just recency bias, and I'm living in the moment, but this right here was one of the best first-round series I've seen in a long time. Specifically, we talk about out East, because we ain't seen something like this happen out East in a long, long time. I mean, we had a game winner from Dante DiVincenzo. We saw Tyrese Maxey be down by, what, seven points or 40 seconds to go and come back and help them win that game. And then we had this one, which goes down to the last couple possessions, and it's over. Um, shout out to Buddy Heald, I guess. I know he took the stupid shot at the end of the game, maybe not realizing that he had a full three seconds left. But for him to come off the bench in his 21 minutes, give them 20 points is insane because the first couple, well, the last couple games of the series, he was basically unplayable. Like he got DMP coaches' decisions because he wasn't shooting the ball well. He made, wasn't making the right decisions. In this game, in his 21 minutes, I thought he was phenomenal on both sides of the floor, given the, the track record of Buddy Hill as a defender. So that's good for him in his career because, yeah, you have a series where a team trades for you to do one singular thing and you struggle to do that one singular thing and then you basically don't play in the playoffs. It's not a good sign when you're an upcoming free agent. But in game number six, he comes out here, he has a phenomenal game. I'm sure opposing GMs will look past the idea of him missing that shot. Um... Where do I start really with these with 76ers team? Uh, Joel Embiid ended the game with 39-13-2-1-1. One, one. It is it's extremely hard for me to be critical of him, but I have to. Because I thought in the fourth quarter of this entire series, he was non-existent. Now, the, the, the reason why I want to not be super critical because we know what he was dealing with before um, before the playoffs started, right? I mean, he only played, what, eight games before the playoffs started after myths and months. He has the Bills palsy. I mean, every single one of these games, he went to the, to the back room, to the locker room to get checked out on something. So, obviously, he was not 100%. And we saw him basically be Joel Embiid in a lot of these games through the first three quarters. And then the fourth quarter comes around, and he was not there. Today, I'm watching him play. Remember, season is on the line and he deferred on every single possession if I'm not mistaken the only uh, field goal he made was like they were giving him two points because they didn't want to give up the three like he backed down it might have been OG Ananobi and went straight up and that was it and then the, the next possession he fouled out and to think about the sneaker that he put together on game number five, shout out to Tyrese Maxey for holding it down in that time frame. I wanted him to come out here. And, he, and again, you look at the final stat line, damn, Joel, 39-13. But the fourth quarter, when it's down to the nitty-gritty, that's when you want stars to be stars. And we saw that with Jalen Brunson, where the, four, the, in, the third quarter run in the fourth quarter was exactly what you want from your star player. And you did not get that from Joel Embiid. And I think a lot of it is just him running out of gas. I literally think that's what it is. He's running out of gas every single time. I mean, in game number before um, Nick Nurse opted to not bring him out at his normal time. Like, he played the entire fourth quarter, and I think that was one of the reasons why they ended up losing that. They lost that game because Jordan Embiid was gassed and gassed and gassed. And to see him defer in a game like this just sucks, man. I mean, I'm not a Joel Embiid fan. I'm not a hater either. Like, I'm a, I'm a very neutral guy when it comes to Joel Embiid. I think he's extremely talented. He's one of the best players in basketball. When you think about every single run for the last four years or so, him coming into the playoffs with an injury or him dealing with an injury throughout the playoffs and it ends pretty much the same every single time. I mean, I don't know if these numbers have updated, but let me go ahead and look at them. Joel Embiid, yeah, this is only going through the first five games, so it don't even count game number six just yet because the NBA dot com ain't updated. In the, the fourth quarter, let me, let me show y'all this. In the fourth quarter of this series so far, Joel Embiid was averaging a, a whopping... Uh, five points per game on 18% from the field. Like four of his five points came at the line. Like 18% from the field in the fourth quarter. Like that is just not what you want from your star player. At the end of the day, um, the 76ers go into the offseason with a ton of money to potentially spend. And I, I'm going to talk about this more in the Kenny Beaton podcast, which I'm about to tape right after this. So it'll come out tomorrow around 2 o'clock Eastern time. But this offseason is so very critical to the Joel Embiid era in the Philadelphia 76ers. Like, I honestly do believe next year would be, like, the last run of them trying to build a team around him. And the, the sad part about it is that this free agency class is not anything too deep. You have Paul George, and I think that Paul George will resound with the Clippers. I guess it depends on what happens in their game tomorrow. But I feel 
like he's a, a Clippers guy for the foreseeable future, then the next best guy in free agency is like, I mean, I guess technically LeBron James might opt out of his contract or whatever, whatever, but it's like DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan, is he, fix, is he fixing this? Now, I, I can tell you one thing. DeMar DeRozan is going to have a better game in series than Tobias Harris. Maybe that's what we should have started. Toby played 29 minutes today and scored zero points. I don't know how that is possible. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to double check this. He took he took two shots. One of them came late in the fourth quarter. It was a mid-range pull-up. I don't even remember the first shot that he attempted in this game. He attempted two shots. That is a 30-plus million dollar man. And just the entire playoff series, he didn't do anything offensively. I thought he competed very well on the defensive side of the ball. I think in the first two games, he's one of the main reasons why we saw Jalen Brunson struggle. But eventually, Jalen Brunson figured that shit out. So it's like... I just, when, when you think about your third option, which Tobias Harris was paid to be, yes, he was paid to be that most most likely. T to him to give you this type of series is just awful because any production is better than the production that we got today. To think that if he gave you, if he, if he gave you seven points tonight, <laughs> just seven of them things, you might be going to a game seven. You might be going to a game seven. It is mind-blowing and um he is out the door there's no way philadelphia fans are going to accept him back i would not be surprised if i opened up my phone right now when people are burning tobias harris jerseys i don't know why nobody would have a tobias harris jersey in philly but if you had one you're probably burning it because this was an all-time stinker from a guy that's making at that time that he signed was like max money and, and crazy stuff i thought uh, kelly Oubre played a phenomenal series that's one thing you could build on hopefully you can bring him back he's going to get paid but i don't think it's going to be anything too crazy i mean some of the teams that have some money might try to pry him away because again it's not a crazy free agency class but i thought he has such a phenomenal series offensively and defensively crazy offensive boards here there big time shots i mean like, as good of defense you can have on Jalen brunson again Jalen brunson had a 47 piece and a 41 piece in this series but for the most part i thought kelly Oubre was really good they did not have d'anthony melton i think he played a little bit in game number five i want to say but obviously he's not uh, he wasn't where he wanted to be. Tyrese Max, it's unfortunate that he had the game that he had today. But after game number five, I guess you could kind of excuse this because there is no game number six of Tyrese Max. He doesn't do what he did in game number five. But yeah, you wanted a better uh, outing from him. I thought Kyle Lowry, since they acquired him, uh, added some type of like glue. It's not look to score. Today, he scored zero. I mean, you want maybe more than zero. But ultimately, at the end of the day, because uh, Buddy Hill plays such a phenomenal game, you didn't have to worry about Kyle Lowry. He didn't play. I don't know if he played at all in the fourth quarter. I want to switch this over to the New York Knicks, though. I'm going to make an entire video giving my predictions for the second round matchups and stuff. But this is such a Tom Thibodeau game where he was like, I do not want this to go to a game seven. And he's notorious for playing his guys every single minute. Josh Hart, 46. OG Adenobi, 45. Jalen Brunson, 43. I mean, Dante DiVincenzo played 48 minutes tonight. He was phenomenal after a couple games in this series where he wasn't really doing much. And then uh, Miles McBride closed games above him in game number four, I want to say, in game number five as well. Uh, but he came out, had a phenomenal game. And he was like, we don't want to have a game seven, so I'm going to play my guys as many minutes as they can because they didn't have any bench production offensively until Miles McBride hit that big time three in the fourth quarter. And um, you got one layup slash dunk from Mitchell Robinson. So they had no bench production whatsoever. Part of that is because Bogey's out for the rest of the series. But a good part of that is him riding his guys. I thought OG Ananobi was so uh, amazing tonight, offensively and defensively. He had the poster dunk, which you'll see forever. He had timely, timely, timely buckets. I mean, this this team just killed the offensive glass. They had 20 offensive rebounds, and it's kind of the story of this series. This team outgrinded, outworked, and outhustled the 76ers. It's like the 76ers was not used to going against a team that wanted it. Especially not in the first round. And this team, this New York Knicks team, wanted it. Where even their best players are diving to the rim. The six-foot point guard is diving to the rim to potentially get an offensive rebound. And the one thing that you want to do if you're the Philadelphia 76ers or a team in this predicament where the other team is crashing the glass so very heavy, if you're going to get that rebound, you want to go out, you want to run. And Tyrese Max is basically the only guy on the team that can kind of push the tempo. Everybody else on this team is kind of older slash slower pace. So they couldn't even capitalize on the idea of the Knicks crashing the glass. I'm curious to see what happens next next series because the Pacers are a team that'll make you pay if you don't get that offensive rebound because they're going to go they're going to go they're going to go I want to go through some film and go through some of their last couple matchups before I start talking about that series but I feel pretty good about the Knicks potentially coming out of that again I got to go look through all of the stuff but 
Um, I just want it. I, I want it more from Joel Embiid in that fourth quarter. We'll see exactly what they do on the offseason. And one thing I failed to mention is they they have this money and they have these tradable draft picks. I think two of them to be exact. So maybe their free agency is not literally free agency, but it's them going out and trade for a guy. I don't know who that is or who could be available. Uh, Daryl Morey, though, I honestly do believe this might be the last chance um, for Joel Embiid as the process. You let me know in the comment section.